Hi, my name is Alvin. And I'm Hao Yu. Today, we'll study about transmission electron microscope. First, why do we need a transmission electron microscope? Before the invention of electron microscopes, optical microscope has been used to study microstructures such as biological cells. However, the use of visible light in optical microscopes brings a limit of how far it can produce an image of such microstructure. Generally, an optical microscope has a resolution limit about 200 nanometers, and hence it cannot be used to study finer details about the organelles inside the cells. A transmission electron microscope, or TEM, does not use visible light, but fast-moving electrons instead using particles that possess smaller de Broglie wavelength than visible light. Electron microscopes have lower diffraction limit and hence able to have stronger magnification beyond what optical microscopes can do. In this video, we will learn the basic working principle of TEM and how it is precious for various uses. First, let us see how a TEM looks like. Alright, that's a big metallic tube. Now let's examine what's inside that tube. From the top, we have a virtual source of our image, which is usually an electron gun. This source produces a stream of monochromatic electrons that is used for our imaging process. This stream of electrons is focused to a coherent beam by the condenser lenses. The beam of electrons strikes the specimen and some of them are transmitted. The transmitted electrons are then focused by the objective lens to form an image. As this lens provides the first magnification of the image and defines the resolution of the microscope by its diffraction limit, the objective lens is considered to be the most important lens in TEM. Moving further, the intermediate lens controls the mode of imaging use. And finally, the projector lens is used to provide another magnification of the image before it is projected to the phosphorus screen. Let us see the electron sample interaction. There are three types of transmitted electrons from the sample. The first one, unscattered electrons. They do not interact with the atoms. Its transmission is then inversely proportional with the sample thickness. The second one, the elastically scattered electrons are useful to obtain diffraction pattern of the sample in the selected area electron diffraction mode. And finally, Inelastically scattered electrons are characteristics of the sample elements and hence are useful for extracting information of a specimen region. The transmitted electrons are then used for imaging. The bright areas of our image correlate to the region where more electrons are transmitted, meaning that the density of the material in that region is less than the darker region. This property is then used to design many techniques of TEM observation different imaging techniques that one can employ with a TEM. The most common and simplest is the bright field imaging technique. This technique simply uses the transmission and absorption or scattering of electrons from the sample. The bright areas are where the electrons are able to pass through the sample, while the dark areas could represent areas with atoms of high atomic mass or simply a thicker area. The dark field imaging uses a phenomenon known as Bragg scattering. The conditions for an incident wave to be reflected happens at a specific angle. To observe this image, we have to block out the central electron beam and position the electron beam at that specific incident angle. The scattered beam that comes back at us represents the area where there is matter, and the intensity depends on the incident angle. The remaining area where Bragg scattering conditions are not met remains dark. Using this property, one can detect dislocations which are line defects in the crystal. Together, bright and dark fields can provide information on the size and morphology of the particles and can detect crystalline areas, defects and grain boundaries. The next powerful imaging technique is the high resolution TEM that can resolve down to the angstrom level. At first glance, you may think that the dark spots represent the positions of the atoms, but it may not be the case. High resolution TEM cannot be explained by the same process of bright field imaging. Instead, the bright and dark areas are due to the electron wave 
interfering with itself at the image plane. And these features change as the focus changes. This is called phase contrast. And to further understand this phase contrast, we have to bring in complicated math such as Fourier transformation and computer simulations. So let's not do that. Suffice it to say that information such as crystal lattice distance, orientation and areas of defect can be obtained. Selected area electron diffraction is so called because an area of the sample is selected for the diffraction imaging. To achieve this, the intermediate lens is adjusted until the back focal plane of the objective lens is focused on the screen. This is a free demo of single crystal from crystalmaker.com and it simulates the diffraction pattern of a sodium chloride crystal. For a crystalline structure, bright diffraction spots will appear, each corresponding to a different satisfied diffraction condition of the crystal structure or lattice planes. Notice that the diffraction spots appear and disappear as you tilt the sample. That is because different lattice planes have come into play, and the diffraction conditions have been altered. So a single crystal will be able to have more than one set of diffraction spots from different orientations. For few, large, randomly oriented crystals, you might get such a diffraction pattern. For many small, randomly oriented crystals, you will observe rings, which are just many spots dotting around in a circle. You can use these spots, and perhaps even the rings, to find the orientation and crystal structure. This is difficult, but scientists and researchers have been able to extract information on the crystal structure and its orientation to the electron beam puff. In conclusion, the TEM is a powerful tool for research. It gives us information of the crystal structure, orientation, defects, grain size, and boundary. However, the resolution is limited by the wavelength of the electron, as well as spherical aberrations from the objective lens. Thank you for your time and I hope you've enjoyed watching this video.